Hello, geeked primates. Welcome to Sonic the Hedgehog's 25th anniversary special. Sonic was first spawned June 23, 1991, to replace the not-so-cool Alex Kidd as Sega's official mascot and to go head-to-head -head with Nintendo's Mario. Over the years, Sonic has helmed 36 featured games and has made several guest appearances, including a spot in the upcoming LEGO Dimensions. Sonic's legacy has ran through five animated series, comic books, in the film Wreck-It Ralph, and he will star in his own film in 2018. Now Chris joins us at Indie Pop Con for continued coverage. We're here today with Scott Shaw. He's a cartoonist well known for his, his work on What's New Scooby-Doo, Johnny Test, uh, the Muppet Babies. He won four Emmys for the Muppet Babies. He's going to tell us today for the, a little bit today for the 25th anniversary of Sonic the Hedgehog about his uh, comic book. He was the first artist to do the comic book parts. So how that While we're talking, I'm going to draw you a sign. So, if you want to cut away from us and see what this is, if you want to get it maybe, I don't know, from the rear, whatever you can. Alright, so how did I come to do Sonic? I got a call from a friend of mine at Archie who was putting together this comic about a new video game character. And you might remember, if you're video game mavens, Archie did one video game based comic for a few years. Was, uh, Bayou Billy. And it was one of those video games that like lasted one quarter and then disappeared. But they did like a four issue mini series for Bayou Billy. Anyway, they called me because they knew that I'd done Captain Carrot and the Zoo Crew and a lot of talking animal characters. Here. And the game was out. Not, maybe it wasn't out, but I know they were already working on the ABC show. Because those are the models they gave me to work with. And indeed, well, I don't have a copy here, but if you notice in this first issue, Sonic's only got three fingers in the thumb. And, of course, Nobody noticed when I got printed that way, but in, in, in reality, Sonic must have four fingers in the front. You know why that is? That? If he only has three, then it implies he's in the Yakuza, the Japanese Mafia. And if he has more than five, there's still a, 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 a all hanging over society there in the mutations after the atomic bombing went on for generations. And showing somebody with a mutated hand would be very offensive. So that's why they're characters. They want to make sure that they have all their digits. Anyway, they showed me what he looked like. And the first thing I thought was, he reminds me of Felix the Cat. And I love Felix the Cat. He's one of my favorite designs of a cartoon character. They certainly prefer him to Mickey Mouse. And he proceeded to Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse is kind of based on Felix. And uh, anyway, they said, okay, well, whatever. If you want to do them, we've got these issues. And I started working on them. And uh, Paul Castiglia kind of dropped off the project. And then it went with another person. Anyway, I drew the first zero one and two and then I got real busy with my daytime job in an ad agency so I only did the cover three and then in the regular series I did like a pin up for number 50 in the was about that big and then reprinted as a full page and then I think I wrote into an eight page tail story too so I got into it I mean I like Sonic I like drawing him I like the character wasn't that crazy about working for Archie Comics? They uh, reprinted my story over and over without me getting a penny for it. And I never signed to work for hire. But I don't want to start a fire here because it's a friend of mine. But my situation is a lot different than Ken Pender's. I just want to say, please pay me for the work I did. Because, you know, they, they never told me, for example, they were going to reprint it as a 16 page and an 8 page giveaway. I was working in an ad agency at the time, I was getting $10,000 a page for advertising for Pebble Well, 
if you told me that, I would say, well, that's what, this is my rate for doing advertising. Yeah. Uh, they also, you know, you can download uh, my stories on uh, iTunes. You also can see them as Easter eggs in games, in a number of games. So, I, I, I kind of doubt Archie's ever going to cough up. They're just not a very respectful toward creators, even though I didn't create Sonic. They kind of took the ball off. I don't think they ever thought it would amount to anything, quite honestly. I thought they thought, it's another Bayou Billy, we're going to take the money and run. But Sonic is almost, it's almost too com complicated now when I read the comics. Yeah. Especially after they kind of rebooted things. It's like, you can't keep track. It's like trying to follow the X-Men. There are now so many characters and so many realities in Sonic's world that just kind of throw up their hands and go, I'll just play the game thing. Yeah. Uh, everybody's always after your con uh, Sonic Zero, the, the first comic, Comic Zero. Yeah, that's kind of a... <clears throat> <laughs> Excuse me, that's kind of a, a, a tough thing to acquire now. Although I signed quite a few of them at the show. I think its price has gone down because they've, they've reprinted it so many times. At one time I heard it was like selling for $300. It's a good, nice copy. Well, I, I, fight, I fight over trying to get them on eBay, but I keep on getting outbid every single time. Yeah, get sniped at the end. How they much get, are they going for now? Like about 100 uh, Yeah, about 100 well, it's probably the only comic I ever worked on that is like really a collectible thing. These are all characters I've created for, for comics and advertising and things. But, you know, when you compare them to the characters I've worked on that weren't mine, that other people, you know, the Flintstones, and of course Sonic gets a nice place. In fact, I'm, I, I really think I'm going to do like an all Sonic print because. I worked on Sonic enough, I could draw all of the Freedom Fighter characters, and I could put, you know, Sonic and Tails, like, front and center, and I think it would make a nice poster, don't you? Oh, yeah. And definitely. draw them in the old school style, not the extreme Sonic, the cuter, friendly Sonic. I'll tell you one thing, you're going to regret interviewing me because I've got so many stories. I've had two or three women, young women, come here today and yesterday just thrilled to meet me because they consider me like the sensei of Sonic. Okay. Like, well, I don't consider me to be the sensei of Sonic, but because I was the first guy and I and I do remember I drew him cute rather than the angry Sonic. But there are an awful lot of young women who love Sonic to death. They want to be cartoonists because of Sonic. I even met an art teacher, a high school art teacher. She was in her early 30s and said, your comics are what made me want to become an artist. So Sonic has obviously reached an awful wide range of people. And even though it was never intentional, I'm very proud to have been a part of the fact that that, that so many people, especially young women, seem to dig my version. We met a young woman with purple hair. She said she talked to you a good part yesterday. She hung out yesterday. She was, she was in love with meeting you. Well, she's she's a Sonic, uh, one of the faithful, I'll tell you that. Here, let me finish up the Sonic. You got any other questions? I'll make it short, did, but... Did you think Sonic was going to have the impact it had when the, the first comic came out? It came out the, when the, sec, the same month the second game came out. I... I thought Sonic had staying power because I think the character, it was a little like Pokemon. Pokemon had the nurturing thing for the girls and the fighting thing for the boys. Sonic's a little different but similar. He's really cute, so girls like him. But he's really fast and aggressive, so boys like him. I would say my favorite character from Japan has those qualities too, is Astro Boy, Mighty Adam, you know who that is? Yep. Because he's cute, but he's a brave, courageous fighter, and it's like, 
I think yeah, that's why he's such a he popular has, character. Got his butt. Yeah, but he's a he's really a pacifist. He, he's he's fighting for equal rights for robots. Considering that that was created about ten years after the war ended, to create a pacifist superhero really shows that how the war must have changed Japan. But I love those comics because he is such an appealing character. I think that's the main thing. Sonic is very appealing no matter how you draw him, whether it's the old school version or the new school. He, he has that kind of appeal like Felix the Cat or Mickey Mouse or whatever, but he's got a little edge to him, which is always fun. The eyes. I kind of cheat the eyes. I make the eyes a little like the old ones and a little like the new ones, but I don't make them green. See, I know, I, I know the stories. I know what not to do. I don't want Sonic fans stalking me online. <laughs> that is something I'd like to mention, though. Boy, I went on a Sonic fan page, and they were all up in arms about Ken Penders. And then when I kind of mentioned, you know, that I was frustrated that I felt they owed me money because they took advantage of me. Some of the people understood, but a lot of people were like, we're much more interested in this non-existent character than you're just the, you're just the cartoonist. It's like, well, I'm real, and I drew the comic, doesn't that count for something? You know, it's like, no. <laughs> It's just about Sonic. Well, okay, but call me when you wake up. Now I'll probably get lambasted for even saying that. <laughs> anyway, here I'll hold this up so you can see him right side up. There you go. There's Sonic. By the way, uh, any fandom for Chronic the Hampong? Have you ever seen those t-shirts? Yeah, I see, I see those shirts all the time. Yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> pretty funny. Hello, we're here with another Sonic Abbott fan. Which game is your favorite Sonic game? Sonic Adventure um, on the Dreamcast, for the GameCube. You see you just got some autographs today? Yes, from uh, Scott Shaw, the actual artist for the old style, like the one on your shirt. Probably uh, Sonic 2 back on the Genesis, and it was just different than other platforms because not only did you have the platforming the traps, you also, of course, had the speed. And it's just I have so many fond memories of getting from the first to the last boss, and it was the best out of the three in my opinion. Um, I really like Sonic Heroes just because it has an awesome soundtrack, um, and it's still like it's a great game. Um, not the best, but it's the, it's great. Um, I also really like the Blaze the Cat game just because she was a great character. I don't like her, so. Recently announced, the Sonic the Hedgehog film due out in 2018 is to be a live-action CGI hybrid, and it's rumoured to have a dark tone with a PG-13 rating. Sonic will have to team up with Dr. Eggman to face a greater evil. Please give us your thoughts below, and thanks for subscribing.